So here we have a piece of Brazilian pepper and we are going to turn this into a shallow live edge bowl. Just cutting it to the right size for the lathe. Just finding the center there so we can uh, give an even cut. This is best done on a bandsaw, although I don't have a bandsaw, so um, you've got to be really careful not to get a kickback and uh, watch out for your fingers. Even when the blade is on uh, maximum depth, it's still not enough to get through to the center. So I'm just using my uh, Swedish Viking axe to do the remainder of the cutting or the splitting. Just finding a center point. If you just go by eye and you're slightly off, you're actually going to lose quite a lot of material. So it's best to find the center point before you start. Here I'm just making a little divot for my drill bit with my little homemade mallet. That mallet's actually made from a uh, piece of sleeper. Installing the four jaw chuck onto the lathe. And this is what we call a worm screw. The worm screw has a very nice aggressive thread. And that's going to go into the 8mm hole that I've drilled into the bark side of the Brazilian pepper. So there I am bringing up the tailstock onto the central point I've marked and locking it in place so it's gripped from two sides. Right, we'll now start uh, smoothing off the edges and creating the arch side shape of the bowl. Some of the bark started to come off and uh, I'm actually wanting to retain the bark to have a live edge. So I'm just going to use a little bit of CA glue to uh, stick down that bit of bark that started to lift. You've got to be careful to move your fingers every half a second or so or they'll get stuck. I'm sure uh, that's happened to a few of you. Here I am creating the tenon as well as the foot of the bowl. The foot is just above the tenon. Once the tenon is done, we will turn the bowl around and grip it into the four jaw chuck so we can hollow the other side. You can see there's still some flat spots on either end which still need to come off. What I'm doing now is creating a slight dovetail on the tenon so that the four jaw chuck can grip it nicely. And we're turning at just over 1100 reps per minute. Here I'm using my parting tool just to make the tenon slightly smaller. So we'll remove the tail stock now and then I'm going to use my detailed spindle gouge just to tidy up the base of the tenon so that it's nice and flat before I put it into the four jaw chuck. You 
can actually see now that there's a slight vibration now that the tailstock has been removed. We'll just put the gouge against the um, tenon to make sure it's flat. Now we can remove it and turn it around. The tailstock can now come off the lathe completely as I'm not going to be using it for the hollowing part. And again, the outside of the bowl actually determines the shape of the inside of the bowl because you're going to follow the inside curve that you did on the outside. It's quite a big tenon I've created, so we're going to open the jaws quite wide. And that dovetail is going to fit in there nice and snug. I'm making sure to push the um, material tight into the jaws that there's no uneven fit. And again, before you switch the lathe on, it's always important to turn it manually just to make sure it's not going to hit the tool rest. I'm now going to use my freshly sharpened 55 degree swept back bowl gouge. You start in the closed position and gently open it and it starts to cut. Once you've cut for a short while you want to stop and check your work every few minutes. I like to leave a central large portion in the bowl while I'm turning the outside as it helps the bowl to be balanced. It's quite therapeutic to watch the wood coming off. This is uh, turning at twice the speed. These calipers are quite handy. I'm going to put them on the bowl to check thickness and the side closest to me is exactly what's happening on the bowl side. So I can then see by looking at the side closest to me how thick the walls of the bowl are. It's important to try and get them even, um, especially in the drying process so that they can dry evenly as well and prevent cracking. I'm now going to position the tool rest slightly inside the concave of the bowl. And uh, here we have a bowl scraper and this is just to do the final smoothing off now that I've created the shape of the inside of the bowl. And I'll start off on 120 grit sandpaper and I'll work my way up to 400 grit so it's nice and smooth. Forgive me, there was quite a lot of dust on the screen of the camera. As you can see. Right, this is a wet piece of Brazilian pepper and before we varnish it or oil it, it's going to need to dry. So wood typically dries at about one inch per year. Um, a much quicker way to dry it is to put it in the microwave for short intervals. Then you take it out and uh, let it cool down and then put it back in again 
for a short period. You can see here that the ball is 0.34 kilograms or 344 grams. So have a coffee break, wait for the bowl to cool down, and then you can reapply it into the microwave multiple times until it's dry. Keep weighing it so that you can keep getting an indication of the moisture evaporating. Right, let's weigh that again and have a look. So it was 0.344 and now after multiple microwaves it is 0.236. So I'm quite happy that feels dry now. I'm going to head off to my garage and uh, take the tenon off. There you can see I'm tightening my face plate onto the lathe. The piece of wood attached to the face plate with four screws is actually just a gum pole that I smoothed and that's called a jam chuck and the jam chuck enables you to put it inside the bowl and when you bring up the tailstock like I'm going to do now it just keeps it in position which enables you to remove that tenon below the bowl just leaving you with a nice foot. Again, I check by hand that it's as centralized as possible. Here I'm using my 55 degree swept back bowl gouge to start removing the tenon. I'm now using my parting tool to create a little bit of a recess so that the foot of the bowl is a lot smaller than the whole base. It just helps it to sit nice and flat. Now we're switching to the detailed spindle gouge just to remove the last little bit of the tenon. The tenon is gone and we have a nice little foot for the ball to sit on. Just carefully sanding the little nub off there so it's smooth. And then we can start applying the Danish oil. This is a fantastic product to protect your wood. I didn't realize how empty my can was and what they recommend um, it doesn't enjoy having too much air in the can. So as you can see, it's turned into a bit of, uh, it started to crystallize. What they do recommend is as your can starts to get emptier, you add marbles to the can, in other words, to keep the liquid full, so that there's less air in it, and then it doesn't create these crystals. But fortunately, there's still enough in there for me to get through this little live edge bowl. can see those natural grains there, the Danish oil just bringing out the beauty of them. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Here I am sitting on my homemade bench, also on my homemade sleeper table, enjoying the new little bowl. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Until next time. Thank you very much.